Welcome back friends. So let us talk about diversity in the living world. So uh, what does we mean by diversity in the living world? Now once we talk about the diversity for the living world, we know this is the diversity for the living organism, right? So diversity of living organism or simply the diversity of biological things biological things so if we talk about the diversity of the biological things simply that diversity is termed as biodiversity right so it's biological diversity that means it is biodiversity now diversity is a term which which i think you all know it means uh, the differences, I mean, I mean the variations that are present in a particular population, the variations that are found overall throughout the world about uh, the different living creature that are uh, now present, right? So living creature are have, having different versatilities, varieties over there. So those varieties are termed as the diversity. So if you look at here, this picture will tell you the diversification here from insects so you can see insects and among insects you can see some type of insects are looking like this some of them looking like gorgeous like this fishes you can see some fish uh, have don't have bright coloration they have a mimicking tendency of a color like a rock or some other fish is having beautiful coloration you can see a bird that bird is having a huge large beak another bird is having very small beak and this bird on the other hand is having a, a beautiful coloration in the body in mammalian group you can have someone who who have a beautiful horn and eat grasses on the other hand you can see another type who can eat living organism I mean flesh right so that's why these are the different varieties that are present over the time over the year throughout the world throughout the geographical locations this in a sense is termed as biological diversity or biodiversity because because these living organisms are diversifying in many nature in many sense right they are not fixed in a particular location now if you study a particular geographical location you may find there are some similarities between organisms that are present there but in a whole if you study all the organisms of the world you will see this diversity to emerge very strongly right now uh, that makes us uh, the biologist to question certain things because you know so much diversity is present throughout the world so how can we possibly know about each of these different organisms independently and that's the question for us to study and put them in different groups so that we can easily identify them so remember so so we need to identify them right and we need to identify them and we need to put some name to them because you know without the name we cannot actually recall anyone or we cannot talk about anyone so giving name is very very necessary for all these cases so that's why we need to identify them we need to provide them with a suitable name and also we we provide certain names to them so that we can recall that name so whenever we talk about that name, it will be specified to a particular living organism, right? And finally, we need to arrange them. We need to arrange them, right? We need to arrange them in specific, I mean, processes so that we can easily talk about one particular group and not talk about any other particular group and it can happen, right? So arranging all of them is very, very necessary. So identification, naming, and proper arrangement. So it's, it should be proper. So let me put the uh, prefix here. It should be proper arrangement. So you can easily uh, get the data or information about that organism. So diversity in the living organism creates these problems to us. And we need to solve all of these things, right? So we need to uh, get some way to identify them, name them, and properly arrange them. And there are different science and different field of biological science to deal with all these situations. For example, for the identification part, they have certain characteristics, like they have certain 
characteristics and we all know that each and every one of us have a particular characteristic right for example a bird has certain characteristics that makes them bird an insect has certain characteristic that makes them insect uh, i mean mammal has certain characteristics that make them mammals right so that's why we need to put them according to their characteristics into groups right into suitable arrangements right so we need to look at the characteristics and looking at the characteristics we need to put them in certain groups so that we can classify them right so for this classification and putting them into, into groups so that we can arrange them is termed as taxonomy this particular field of biology is termed as taxonomy so looking at the characteristics we will put them in different arrangements that's called the science of taxonomy and once we put them in different categories remember we'll putting them in different categories so those single categories will be termed as a taxon they are termed as a taxon or taxa simply let's say taxa they're termed as taxa okay so this is a way of putting them in different categories okay so once you know and, and putting them in different categories or classifying them for 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 all these things we require to know certain characteristics of them right so for example we need to know the characteristics of this organism to put them into a particular group or we need to know the characteristic of this organism to put them into a particular group because you know once we form groups that means say a uh, group one it contains so we, we put that if an organism has a beak instead of a leaf if the organism is having a wing for flying if the organism is having only two leg legs for flying i mean for walking and all these things and if the organism is having you know uh, i mean let's say feather instead of feather instead of a skin to cover its i mean uh, the outermost cover is feather so if all this criteria is met for that organism then only we put them into the group 1 which is called remember you all know birds sorry birds right so this is how we need to group different uh, categories i mean we'll we'll put certain features if those features matched for a particular organism we put them into that group that's what's happening in the taxonomy and each of those categories are termed as taxa remember now once we know these things it's fine once we know that and only it is only possible if we know the characteristics of that organism right so we need to find the characteristics once we know the characteristics then only we can identify that particular organism so all these things are interconnected as you can see right so characteristics are very very important now what kind of characteristics we are looking for here we are looking for characteristics majorly in the in early days we are majorly looking for physiological physiological and morphological characteristics physiological and morphological characteristics morphological means morph means the structure of them right so we're looking for the structure of that organism and then the physiology of that organism to list them but nowadays as as the time pass by and this taxonomical classification schemes are improved and advanced because you know morphology may look similar but ultimately they can be varied so nowadays we not only i mean depending on physiological or morphological characters but also we are depending on the genetic genetic characters right because you know uh, the, in very basic terms we are defined by our genes because whatever genes we are having and how they are expressing is ultimately giving us who we are right so varying in the genetic needs or genetic makeup will reflect in the organism physiological and morphological scheme right so we can put them in different groups like based on majorly these three things but nowadays multifactorial 
things and many other factors are also taking into account to finally categorize them. So that's it. And once we know the characteristics and put them in different taxa to find the taxonomical groups. Now the second thing comes to our mind is, you know, the third thing actually is to put them a suitable name so that we can find them in future. And once we need to talk about somebody, we need to call up them by their names, right? So similar thing in this case too. So you need to put certain name to them. And this name is termed as a nomenclature process. You all know, naming this organism will be termed as a nomenclature. Nomenclature process. Okay, so nomenclature means simply, very, very simply, naming an organism, right? So you may think that what's the big deal about it? You know, you're looking uh, at an organism, say this this bird, it's looking, you know, uh, it, this bird is having a red coloration in the, in his chest, right? So you can simply turn as the, uh, I mean, I mean, talk about is, you know, or simply look at this bird, it's having a yellow colored face. So simply turn it like a yellow face bird, something like that. But it never works like this way because, you know, regional name is not going to work. So for that reason, we need to decide and put them an universal ID. So naming means we are talking about universal ID. That means one particular organism will have only one particular name, right? So specific, specific name worldwide. So whenever we talk about that name, it will bring only one organism and that is assigned to that name, right? So that's why we need to have an universal nomenclature. So the universal nomenclature is to talk about, right? So that nomenclature is termed also by binomial, binomial nomenclature binomial nomenclature now why it's called as binomial nomenclature binomial nomenclature means you know bi means two right bi means two so that means it this nomenclature procedure should have two units it has two units to name a particular organism right and they have certain rules to name these organisms and all these things. And what is those things? We'll be talking about them in the future video. Okay, so please stay tuned and look at the future video when we'll discuss about the binomial nomenclature in details. So that's kind of it guys. Thank you.